just try it out, Jeffy. Tulsi also takes the title of public servant very seriously. In many instances, she talks about being in service to the American people and what benefits them, not a corporate or special interest. It's what made her want to run for office at age 21. Uh, you know, at, at a deeper level, even as a young person, as, as you know, a teenager, as a kid, I experienced um, that I was happiest when I was doing things for other people. And so knew in some form or another that I wanted to pursue a path of service in my life. Didn't know exactly how or in what form that would take, but uh, ultimately made that decision at 21 to run for the state house, really seeing the opportunity to have a much bigger impact on things. That's right. At 21, she was running to be the representative of her state of Hawaii. At age 21, I was figuring out what bathtub was my favorite to drunkenly cry in. Uh, and if just anybody's wondering, uh, it was not my bathtub. It was uh, not mine. When she was running, her first issue was connected with a landfill that was going to be built over an aquifer and educating people on why that would be bad for the drinking water and the planet itself. Like protecting our clean water sources, our water aquifers, our oceans, uh, and our environment. Uh, something I had been involved with even as a teenager, forming a nonprofit, you know, joining with my friends to go clean up beaches, but seeing, gosh, what better way to make an impact than to be a, a policymaker mm -hmm. to make sure that, um, you know, as a government, we are making that a priority. Right. When so. uh, there was a landfill that was projected to be built directly over one of our largest water aquifers in the state. Okay. The most populated island in the state is the island of Oahu, where I live and where I grew up. And what I saw through this process as we were going around gathering signatures, uh, getting people aware of the danger of building a landfill over a water aquifer was how close the uh, landfill developer was with the politicians who were greasing the wheels to get this project approved without really being the consumer protectors that they're supposed to be. Right. And she goes on to say that the belief that we're custodians of the planet gives a lot of insight into her environmentalism. It's, 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 um, it's a way of life. Right. You know, growing up in Hawaii, the culture that we're surrounded by is one where we are taught to be custodians of our home, of Mother Earth, uh, and to respect and to take care of uh, our planet, to take care of our home. She's quoted to say, whether we like it or not, our fates as human beings in this world are tied together. And the issues we face, pollution of our air, our waters, oceans, the climate crisis that's before us, these are all issues that require us to sit down, to talk, to work together. Whether it be with friends or people who are our adversaries or potential adversaries, if we in the United States do all we can right now to address climate change, it will still not be enough. We cannot solve these problems alone. We have to work together. We have to work together to make sure our kids today and for generations to come can not only survive, but also thrive and prosper without the fear of toxic and poisonous water or polluted air or not enough food to eat. Climate change should be a bipartisan issue. I mean, we've seen an increase in extreme weather patterns, a variety of species going extinct, forest fires of all kinds spreading faster due to longer dry season. And at one point it got so hot in India that tires were melting into the roads. Like she said, our fates are interlinked with the world we share, regardless of our identities. We've bought into the cult of oil and fossil fuels, but we don't have to keep drinking their Kool-Aid. Gabbard's service to ensure people's right to clean air, water, and food is reflected in her anti-fracking stance and by voting against revoking the Clean Air Act. It should be astounding that humanity needed to make a law to not ruin the thing we breathe to live. I, I don't I don't have an al analogy for this because it's just too fucking insane. And then, and then we wanted to revoke that law. 
Representative Gabbard also went to Standing Rock to protest the pipeline and stand for water rights. And because of this passionate service to the people and everything she stands for, the DNC ensured that she was not to be seen on that debate stage by cheating her out of it. Uh, and I know that Tulsi Gabbard is going to try and stay in for the October debates. Uh, she, was, she was cheated out of the process just the way they cheated me. When we got the, uh, and she has, got the same, the proper number of donors uh, uh, over, uh, over 1,200. Uh, but what happened to her and happened to me is that they didn't put my name. They made sure my name did not appear in a number of polls. So there's a lot of controversy. That, a lot of controversy about the whole DNC process. I'm just going to... Her name wasn't even included in some of the polls. I mean, at this point, the polls might as well have been conducted by, you know, the, the videos of animals that, 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 that sound like they're saying human words, you know? Did, 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 did you hear that bark? It sounded like the dog was saying Biden. No, it sounds like the dog was barking to f say, feed me. That's what it sounds. Stop starving your dog and force feeding the American people someone they don't want. The DNC's process lacks transparency and is extremely complex, so people that want to participate in it feel lost about the process. The sheer notion that Tulsi Gabbard is running for president has exposed how corrupt the DNC and the lengths they will go to keep a truly viable candidate out of the race. Furthermore, her support of Bernie Sanders in 2016 and dropping a prominent position in the DNC probably didn't help her curry the favors of the, uh, 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 of the DNC either. And after the first two debates, Tulsi, it just after the short fraction of airtime that she got, she became the most Googled candidate after both debates. After which Google said, wait, 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 wait. A, a, a candidate that actually stands for people. I mean, we did not approve of that. And clearly, since we've given up on be not being evil, we're going to make sure that nobody hears her messages. <laughs> and then they blocked all her ads. Can, can the cow vigilantes go after Google instead of the Muslims in India? After these blocks happened, she tried to get a statement from Google, but they treated her like she was a crazy ex and ignored all of her calls. Tulsi is now suing Google for manipulating elections, and she states that Google has too much power and apparently are colluding with the DNC, and we don't need the FBI involved to see how blatant that is. The kind of power that Google has is this huge tech monopoly to interfere in our public discourse, interfere in what people are seeing when they're going and looking, uh, using their search engine, and really how they can impact our fair elections. Yeah. And some people have come out and said, well, why is she even running when she's not on the debate stage? Because to her, it's not about the advertisement of democracy. It's about serving the people and fighting for equality and justice. And she's on the ground doing town halls, hearing what the real issues that Americans face every day are. And, and meanwhile, the rest of the Baskin Robin flavors melt under the hot lights of corporate media for sound bites and gotcha moments. And look, if you're going to be questioning her run for the Oval Office, then you should be questioning why Biden, Harris, Buttigieg, or a variety of the corporate whores are still running when people have dictated that they are wildly unpopular and their records show that they are unviable. That's the only time when prostitution is considered legal in America, is when politicians do it for corporations. Look, Tulsi is proving to be the candidate that a lot of Americans do want, and that scares the corporate states of America.